Hey, Emily, what's happening? Hey, Dr. John, nothing too much. An original 17 and 34, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. not a number, so. <laughs> Dude. Hey, my mom um, has been out of her mind. She retired from her professor job, and she has been creating so many new fake accounts and following everything. And so it's been a while, but I'm glad to know the OG 17 still live. That's right. It's awesome. So I guess I'll be brief with my question. Um, so my question when I originally wrote into the show was, I have two boys. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. My five-year-old was born with, I guess you would say, unique characteristics. Um, he was born when he started getting teeth. We noticed that two of his bottom teeth did not grow in. And then after years of going to the dentist and getting bigger, he's had x-rays and those teeth are permanently not in. So his baby and his adult teeth are not in. And he was also born with a heterochromia. So his, oh, his eyes eye, are different colors. Yes. His left eye is bright blue and brown because my husband has very light cool. eyes and I have dark eyes. So it's a very cool, unique yeah. uh, look. My friend Sarah so, has that. It's awesome. It is awesome, but it throws people off a little bit because his it's it's bright blue. Yeah, it's, I mean, but <laughs> very, yeah, very she bright. looks like she's staring a hole through you. Yeah, it's yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> I love it, but yeah. yeah, I can be that could be tough on a five year old. Yeah, so he um he is in school now. He's in preschool now, but okay. he is going to what we call big school in the fall, and he's going to start t ball and going to start doing all the fun kid things and. Mine and my husband's biggest concern is, you know, how do we prepare him or have, we know obviously we want to be age appropriate, but how do we prepare him for the conversation? Like, do we have the conversation before he goes to school? Do we let him come and talk to us? Because we want to be truthful Mm -hmm. with him, obviously. We want to, you know, validate his feelings, but do we start the conversation? Cause he's never really asked about it yet. So So, here's the biggest thing I'm going to tell you about this. And then I'll walk you through a couple of things. Okay. He is going to get his cues for whether he belongs in the world from his mom and dad's energy. He will know that he looks different, but when you're five, everybody's different. That kid's got yellow hair. That kid's got freckles. That kid's got weird teeth. That kid's already got braces. That I don't have any teeth. They know that something's wrong when mom and dad tense up when the kids come. Or when a kid comes and asks a question, where do all your teeth go? And y- they feel you tense up. Then that's how he learns, oh, there's something wrong with me. Or when dad begins to go, well, you know, and starts to answer for him. That's when he learns, oh, something's wrong with me versus something's different about me. So the greatest gift you can give him is to norm the fact that that's how he's, that's how he's made. And he didn't have as many teeth as other kid have. He has this awesome thing about his eyes that are different colors. And very few other people have that. Now with, with one of my kids, I did sit down with him. And I'm going to protect which one, but I sat down with one of my kids and said, hey, I need you to hear me very carefully. You and I have very similar brains. And our brains feel stuff really heavy and our brains work really, really fast. And our brains feel things sometimes that aren't there. And that's going to make us very compassionate and able to sit with hurting people, which is why my whole career, whatever job I had was about that. And it also means... I have to have some people that I trust in my life because my feelings are not always right. And what I was doing in that moment was saying, hey, you're different. I am too. Big whoop de doo You and I can't walk through the world vomiting on people, being angry at people, and we can't walk through the world being scared of the world. But we do need to know that it's going to be different for us. See what I'm saying? And so you sitting down yeah. with him and going, hey, you got part of... Like most kids get one of the sets of colors of eyes of their parents. You got both. And nobody else has that. Very few people. That makes you very unique. And so kids are going to ask questions. Why do you have this one thing? And you'd be like, I got both. 
and they'll go, ooh, cool. They'll learn something's wrong by that re- by your reaction. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Can yeah. I ask you a scary question? Yes. I've yet to meet a parent, and if it's you, you're the first one, call me out and be like, ah, it's not me. I've yet to meet a parent in a situation like this that doesn't have some internalized guilt that our genetics gave our kid a tough road. I think it is that. It's partly that. Like, I definitely have said to my husband, like, did I do? I wouldn't say it's more about, like, his facial, but he's had some, you know, health issues, like, with his breathing. Like, he has, he's asthmatic. Okay. And he was born early, like earlier, uh, like a little over under 38 weeks. And so I was like, you know, if I carried him full term, would his lungs have been fully developed? I think I've kind of worked through that okay. part. Um, but I think more than anything, probably is my husband and I were both bullied mm-hmm. very badly in yeah. school. And so, uh, you know, did it make us, you know, pretty resilient people. Yeah. But did it hurt at the same time? Yeah. It sucked really, really bad at the time. And we just don't want our baby, our kid, you know, uh, Emily, we know he's going to have that pain. It's going to, it's it's going to happen. It'll happen. Yeah. It'll happen. Yeah. You can't protect them from them, from it. What you can do is let them know that when this comes, I'm, I, I, I still love you. And, I can't think of anything that a parent wants more than their kid to not have the same hurts and pains that they did. And when it comes to that, man, kids are mean. And I don't think kids are mean because they're mean. Kids are mean because different is scary or different is, hey, and for you and me, if I, you know, if you and me were at a grocery store and we saw somebody that was missing a lot of their bottom teeth, we wouldn't go, hey, what happened to your face? But that's that's what kids do. Right. And, and so the same right. words aren't malicious. They're not mean. They're literally wondering, why don't you have any teeth? And if your son immediately goes, <gasps> that's different than, I don't know. They never came in. <laughs> right? You see, like, and yeah. kids will go, oh, okay. Hey, his teeth didn't come in. And be like, yeah, all right, we'll go get the ball. And then it's off to the races. Right. But if he learns over time, you duck your head, you get quiet. You don't answer, mom and dad will jump in and save you. <sighs> bullies, and at the middle school level, at the later elementary school level, bullies will smell that a mile away. Um, hey, I'm going to bring Kelly in, okay? She's got a, um, okay. a young son who's um, an a, amazing kid, but he's got some special needs, and they've dealt with this some. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so um, we have a son that he's got um, CP and he walks with a limp and he's also short. And so he, and I had the same fears you did. You know, you just know, like they're going to get bullied. And I, I, when he was really little, I did what John talked about where I would explain him, quote unquote, before anybody had the chance to say anything. And my husband finally called me out on it. And so I stopped doing that. The one thing that's really great is when he starts kindergarten, we found this with ours. When they're that little, I don't care. The other kids don't care. They'll ask the weird question that seems forward. Why are your eyes like that or whatever? And your son will just have to answer it. Ours was always because this is how God made me, period. Mm -hmm. And then those same group of kids will hopefully, because they've known him since, you know, since he started, when he starts kindergarten, will follow him through, you know, elementary and middle school and they will also be that big protection but uh, against the bullies because it will happen and middle school is the worst there's just no ifs ands or buts my son dealt with it we had a bad bully in middle school a kid from another school that came in and his friends were like well that's just him it's no big deal they were that buffer but we always like john talked about we were always the safe place to land we were always the one that let him know that this is just you and there's nothing wrong with you you know, and we would talk about my differences or my husband's differences. And granted, he would say, well, yours, you can't see yours. Yeah, you're right. And that kind of sucks, bud. Sorry. It's, but it's just the way it is. And this is how God made you. And there's a reason. And he was open with it. He laughed with his friends. He still does. He jokes. He's the shortest one of all of them. All of his friends are like 6'2", and he's 5'4", and he's 18. But they joke about it because he's allowed that. He's allowed that he's made that conversation okay for people to um he's disarming about it. And it's like this is just how how I am and I'm fine with that. 
and then it kind of takes a little of that. He's noticed, he said it takes some of that sting out with it when a bully will come up and say something like, oh, yeah, well, you look funny. Yeah? Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, And em- Emily, did you, you hear how Kelly just did that? She said, my son has CP and he's short. We yeah. live in a culture now that is like, hey, we're not allowed to say anything out loud, even if it's empirically true, because somebody will feel a certain... She would be lying to her son, who, by the way, her son is amazing. I try to offer him beer every time he comes up here, and Kelly doesn't Yes, like he, he does try that. He's right about but that. He but he's an amazing kid. But Kelly would be lying to him if he was like, I'm short, and she was like, no, you're not. Because objectively... Like, if you just look at the numbers, he is shorter than all his friends. My my son has, um, and he's in middle school, and they've got a, a friend who's who's not as tall as the rest of them. Bro, they are psychotically protective of that kid in, a, in an amazing way, right? He is there in their gang. Um, so I think there's something to be said for, um, objectively, your son's got different color eyes, Right. Right. And is there a game in your house called Laser Eyes? <laughs> no, okay. but I love it. You see what Still I'm saying? I love that. Like, yes. quick. You've got, like, and there's a way to empower a kid. There's a way to, um, like, and I'm not making jokes at, I'm making jokes with, but we're so unafraid of the differences here that we're not even going to, like, we're not, we're not going to hide them. We're putting everything on the table. It norms it. And then when that bully says the thing, and kids can tell a difference between the kid asking and the kid who's just trying to hurt, right? And right. it will be so on the table that, like Kelly said, oh, yeah, will you walk with a limp? Like, well, duh. <laughs> like, I, mean, um, I remember I had, I, I think I've talked about on the show, I had a, a law student who was sight impaired. She's blind. And I was talking about... Um, disability services about students with special needs and here's some resources. And I asked her quietly, Hey, is it okay if I mention to everybody, um, in this auditorium, like, uh, I want to tell you, I want to make sure I'm, I'm telling you what you're working through specifically. Can I tell them about your disability? I need your permission. And she goes, <laughs> what? And she said it so smart aleck in such a perfect way. She was like, Oh, what do you mean? They don't already know. Like, let's, like, and it was so like, oh, well, duh. She lives with this every day, right? And I was the one, I was bringing shame into something that had no shame. She can't see. Okay. we're make, She's in law school. She's way smarter than I'll ever be, stronger than I'll ever be. So all I have to say is the challenge of what it sounds like here is you and your husband need to make peace with this as our boy. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. And it's like, um, so we know, we kind of know a plan, you know, from his dentist perspective, like we'll be able to fix it when he's 25. Yeah. So he has to have, you know, multiple rounds of orthodontic work. He can get a flapper, which is basically a replacement. So people won't notice when he's about 13, 14 years old. Cool. And so he'll, nobody will ever really quote unquote, know unless you're close to him, you know, uh, and he takes it out at night or whatever. Um, but we can't really get permanence until he's about 25. And so but, but in kindergarten, this, first grade, second grade, they don't really care. You know, everybody's missing teeth, but then you start getting into third grade, fourth grade. And so I know, but you, we're here, here's what you're doing. With it. Emily, you're projecting your experience onto him. Don't do that anymore. Okay. Let's let third grade come. And by the time third grade comes, you're going to have read the no David books. Have you read those? They're no. hilarious. They're amazing. I forgot the author. They're called No David. They're just so great. Um, but the character is like a crudely drawn drawing, and they only have like four or five teeth. Oh. And I want you to show, like, not in a, you're going to look at it and be like, well, that's not, it's, it, it, it's going to feel offensive that I just, I just brought them two together. Your son, who I don't know, I've never seen in this character. But I'm, that's the character that came to my mind. You could go, he's got teeth like you, and he got a book. And what we're doing is we're just norming. This is the way you look. And you are handsome to me. Yes. Right? Yeah. And you've got yeah. laser eyes. <laughs> or I think, I think, I may be out to lunch here, but I think wolves sometimes have that too. And he loves wolves, so and that makes a lot of sense. If you can find that, I may be crazy, but if it's wolves, it's one of. The, 
but find find a comments. Oh my goodness, look at this. You've got these eyes. Or can you make lasers with those different color eyes? Because if so, get dad. Can you believe he just said that? And he'll be like, ah, right? So we're not going to hide from this stuff. It's out. And we're also going to be there on those days. He just wants to be like every other kid and he's not. Those days are the worst. What's crazy is I feel like I can handle those days. Yeah. Like I can emotionally, you know, handle when he's in emotional state. It's the, when something happens, it's like, I don't want to say I freeze, but I almost freeze because I don't. You do because, because seven year old Emily still remembers getting called names. Yeah. 13 year old Emily remembers the hell that was element. I mean, middle school. Yes. And all the things the kids said about you, the way you didn't look right or whatever. And when you make him carry that experience too, it's too much. And where you can sit with him is, man, people used to make fun of me so bad too. Ugh, it's the worst, isn't it? Can I cry with you? Is that okay? It makes me remember when I was a little girl. And join him. But don't hide him from it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And we're yes, also not going to leave him out to the wolves and be like, all right, go get it. I don't care. You don't whine around right. here. Like, no, it's the yeah. worst. Yeah. Kids right. can handle almost any trauma. They just can't do it alone. They can't do it alone. They got to have a safe place to land. And if mom and dad are, are embarrassed by it or mom and dad are trying to protect him from it or shield him from it or anxious about it, he's going to know that's not safe. That's not a place for me to land. And so I think as you move through, I want you to keep this in your mind, both and. Yeah, he looks different. And he's our son. Kids are going to love him. And some kids are going to be awful. We want him just to smile so big in his middle school pictures and he won't. Ugh. And I want him to go run and play, and he's got asthma. All of it. But show him. Let him feel. Mom and dad are, aren't scared of this stuff. And you don't have to be either. Strangers might be. Kids might be. Knuckleheads in your class as you get older might be. Mom and dad aren't scared of it. Yeah, you don't have as many teeth as other people. Thank God we live in a, in a little sliver of history with dentists. They're amazing. Yeah, dude, your eyes are different colors. That's awesome. Different, but awesome. He's lucky to have you, Emily. He's lucky to have you as a mom. Lucky to have your husband as a dad who cares about him. Wants him to have a good experience and a good life. You're going to get some things right. You're going to get some things wrong, and that's okay. It's part of being a parent. Just know. Yep. Both hands. This is how you look. And we love you. Now let's go get them.